Hello, hello. I want to show you a quick overview of object styles in Adobe InDesign and some interesting things that you can do that you might not have seen since they're buried in a couple of layers of options and drop down menus. Uh, so first off, this document that I have here uh, is text on a relatively busy background and it's uh, linked to a data merge document uh, that just has some variable placeholder text here. Um, and I want to show you what happens if you start applying object styles to text frames with some interesting options. So let's take this, um, this text frame that has no uh, style applied to it and apply the green field object style that I've created prior to this uh, recording. You can see that there's a bunch of stuff going on here. Um, there is some text padding along the edge. There is a curved corner. There is a stroke that fades to the right. Uh, there is a fade along the edge of the fill of that text frame. All of these are features of the green field text, uh, green field uh, object style that I've created already. So let's open up that green field uh, object style and see what's going on here. The main thing I wanted to point out uh, in this video um, is that uh, under the drop down menu here, under effects four, uh, by default, it's only going to apply to the object, which is the entire combination of the fill, the stroke, and the text content in that text frame. But you can apply effects to each of these elements individually and have them function independent of the rest of the effects you have applied to the rest of the object. So um, by way of example, uh, let's talk about the fill uh, that I have here. Uh, I have a basic feather applied to the fill uh, that you can see here that's set to 10 millimeters. I can adjust that um, as much as I want. So if it goes to 20 millimeters, you start seeing it, uh, it fade almost completely by the, by the time you get to the center. Um, or I can set it to be much more refined and I can individually adjust the choke on that. But um, the point is that I have this, um, this effect applying only to the fill. And it's not affecting the stroke itself and it's not affecting the text. Um, if you want to see what this, what this would uh, do if you apply it to the entire object, here I'll show you one second. In the basic feather, you start seeing that there is a, uh, an effect being applied to the stroke. And if I start pushing this even further, it's applying to the text as well as fading it out. I don't want that. So I'm going to turn that off. In the stroke, I do have a gradient feather that's applied here. And it is fading out to the right. Uh, again, independent of the rate of uh, disappearance that it, that's going on with the fill. Uh, so I can adjust these sliders individually so that it fades out faster or, or more slowly. Um, and the location at which the opacity uh, ranges from 100, in this case, to 0%. Um, and uh, I can work on this independently. I can rotate the angle as, uh, as I wish. And again, uh, this, is, uh, this functions on its own and does not affect or is affected by the gradient that I've got on the fill. Um, I've also got a couple of other effects on this uh, that I pointed out uh, before, uh, but that's not part of the, um, the effects panel. I have stroke and corner options set up here where the uh, corners are rounded like this, and I can adjust those, of course. Um, that's pretty standard for object styles, uh, but play around with that as you, uh, as you <laughs> uh, deem fit. But I think uh, that kind of demonstrates a little bit of, the, of that particular object style. I want to show you a couple of other examples here just to really show you the extremes that you can go to. Uh, so I'm going to turn off the uh, object style and then apply yellow field. Uh, in this case, the object style has a drop shadow applied to just the stroke. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like here. So effects for stroke and I have a drop shadow. Um, and uh, just to reiterate, uh, this is moving and rotating uh, independent of the drop shadow that I have applied to the, uh, to the object itself. Um, this can be useful if you want to create the, uh, the appearance of a double outline around, uh, around an element. Say you want to have um, just a very thin black rule around these uh, yellow dashes. Uh, you could say one point and then set the spread to 100. And I'm going to make that normal. Um, and one important note, um, the check mark here, shadow honors other effects, is important in this case because um, as soon as the stroke becomes completely transparent, then the, uh, then the shadow also disappears. So if I were to turn off uh, 
uh, that check mark, then you can see that the drop shadow is still appearing where the stroke would be, even though the gradient effect uh, is set to 0% opa opacity. But uh, I want that to disappear, um, and I don't want to do this. I want to set it to uh, zero spread, and I want to have a soft fade in the background, something like that. Maybe, maybe a little bit more of a spread, yeah. Um, okay, so that's that example. Um, let's see another example here. I'm going to turn off the object style and apply a blue field. Uh, the reason I'm turning off the style and then applying another one is because if I were to go from one style to another, you start getting these uh, this little override setup where the uh, previous object style you've applied um, starts um, applying attributes that are outside of the object style that you wanted. So uh, if I were to hop back and forth here, you can start seeing it's, it's a little bit unpredictable sometimes. Um, and I, I would rather just uh, remove the number of question marks I have whenever I have to do a, a, a bug hunt uh, or troubleshooting. I just want to remove as many uh, question marks as possible. So I just turn off the object style and then apply the next one. Um, so uh, again, you can start seeing an example here where I've applied a different type of uh, stroke on this object style, um, and I have a white glow around it. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out on this example um, is that on the stroke, uh, even though it looks like a white glow, I am not using the outer glow function because it does not have the shadow honors uh, other effects uh, option here. Maybe in a future version of a design it will, but for now it does not. Um, and I want to have more control over that glow around the stroke. So instead of using the outer glow function, I'm using the drop shadow function and setting the mode to normal, setting the, uh, the swatch to uh, white or paper, um, and adjusting my settings accordingly there. The important uh, thing being that the shadow honors other effects. Uh, so while it's called a drop shadow, it doesn't necessarily need to look like a drop shadow. You can apply whatever effects you want on this within the bounds of the options available to you. Uh, in this case, I want it to just look like a uh, kind of a, a noisy glow around that stroke. Um, but um, I think that about covers most of the uh, uh, issues. Oh, there is one thing I want to point out here. Yes, this is important. Um, as you're toggling your previews um, in your data merge document, you may notice that the glow that is behind the text uh, doesn't keep up. Um, and I want to point this out on um, all the object styles. Um, so uh, whatever your whatever the text content was on your uh, last preview tends to uh, kind of ghost or uh, uh, remain in place uh, even if the content uh, has changed by uh, toggling the preview um, or or even just changing the uh, paragraph style. It doesn't. It's like the glow in the text doesn't quite keep up um, in the preview. Uh, but I wanted to uh, point out what's going on here. Uh, so. Um, in all of these, um, all of these uh, object styles have a outer glow set to the text within the object, um, and I've got it set to five millimeters with a spread of thirty uh, percent, and that's what you're seeing here. This is the glow um, down here of the content that was there uh, in a previous preview. Um, let me see if I can find it again. Uh, I think it was something like this, maybe. Um, but um, one way to get around this, if you need to immediately see the preview and, and, and check that it's working properly, um, if you don't merge the document just to preview it, um, and you just want to see this while you're previewing it, uh, just cut that text frame and paste it, and then it will update the glow around the text uh, to be properly displayed. So you can see the soft glow around this text here. Uh, if I were to change the uh, object style, you can see that um, the text uh, glow has not kept up, uh, has not updated. So again, I would have to cut and then paste, and now it's working properly. That's a pain in the butt. You don't have to do that, um, and uh, and it can cause some problems if you accidentally cut and paste something that you didn't intend to. Um, you might lose some content. It's happened to me. Um, so instead, I just like to trust that the object style is working, and when I can actually merge the document, um, in this case, I'll just merge to a single record. Um, I can see that in the resulting merged document that the object style is working properly. Um, the glow around the text is working as intended. It's glow the glow only applies to text uh, where the text appears. 
Um, and then there's not extra weird ghosty glows of text that, that, that isn't there. Um, so uh, yeah, that's a little bit of troubleshooting I wanted to point out. But um, the last little thing I wanted to uh, give you a little caution about, this can make your InDesign files rather large. Um, and when you export to PDF, um, you may get some odd interactions if you're exporting to uh, an older PDF protocol, like 2001, for, for example. Uh, the older the protocol for your uh, job settings, uh, for your PDF export settings, uh, the more likely it is that you'll have some odd interactions as that version of the uh, PDF tries to replicate the effects that you've applied in a more recent version of InDesign. So just watch out for that. Make sure you know, you're talking to your uh, manufacturer and your factory or your printer that uh, that everything is working okay. Check your proofs very carefully to make sure it's working uh, as you intended. Um, and uh, have some fun with these object styles because I think there are some interesting things that you could do with it and I'd be curious to see what else uh, you can do with them on your own time. So until then, I uh, hope this was interesting and hope it was useful. Until next time, bye.